and a good morning to folk online as well, and a very warm welcome to you. Not over warm in here today, so hopefully the singing will get us up. Jesus bless us as we gather together to worship this morning. And our call to worship comes from Psalm 36, and it's from verse 7 to 10. He, how priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink for your, from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Continue your love to us, those who know you. Your righteousness to the upright in heart. And mark it always as we pray. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we join together in fellowship to worship you, to praise you, to thank you our almighty, creator, omnipotent, holy and loving God. May your spirit guide our minds and give us grace to listen to what you would have us hear. May your spirit stir our souls so that our very being would be filled with awe and wonder. May your spirit touch and melt our hearts so that we would ever love and live our lives to your glory. Thank you for the opportunity to meet together, whether here in person or joining online, and for the freedom to do so. Loving God, help us to recognise what you would have us do in the days ahead, to grow closer to you, to look to you for strength and guidance, and to serve you more faithfully. And now let us say the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first uh, hymn this morning is 102. 102, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
morning comes from Isaiah chapter 9, <coughs> verses 1 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in the de distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the, the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the deep dark darkness. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as the warriors rejoice when they dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian, defeated, you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, the bar across their shoulders, the end of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be the fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For the government of his shoulder, the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. <coughs> Since we're approaching a I thought we would, I would read this, that passage is very much associated with uh, um, the announcement of Jesus' birth. But first of all, I'm sure you know that Anne Franks and her family spent many years in hiding uh, during World War II, and her diary has become very famous throughout the world. Anne was completely honest about what it meant to be living in the midst of, of war, and yet there was a spark of hope in that never seemed to get extinguished. Here's a, just a short extraction from a diary. I see the world being slowly transformed into wilderness. I hear the approaching thunder that one day will destroy us too. I feel the suffering of millions and yet when I look up at the sky I somehow think that everything will change for the better, that this cruelty to shall end, and peace, tranquility will return once more. In our passage this morning, there is a thought of war, and yet the promise of hope. Verse 5 says, Every warrior's foot used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood, will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. <coughs> yet, the next verse, brings hope of a change. Verse 6, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government will be on his shoulder and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is Israel's, uh, sorry, this is Isaiah's dream of the king who was to come. He was to be a wonderful counselor, Jesus was that person, and people came to him asking him, what shall I do? What would be where will go? And he took their broken lives and made them whole. And he does the same for us today. He was to be the mighty God. Until Jesus came, nobody really knew what God was like. They could only guess and, and hope. In John 14, verse 9, Jesus says, He who sees me has seen the Father. His name is Everlasting Father. <clears throat> Into the majesty of God comes a new gentleness, a sense of love and grace. Now they could come to, like children, to a loving Father. 
just as we can approach our loving Father too. He was to be the Prince of Peace. The world had known succession of conquerors who had brought death and destruction, shattered homes, broken lives and hearts. But the one to come will be mighty in love, but whose throne would be a cross. All of this from the people, the prophet, brought new hope to the people. And for it more for it wonderful than Isaiah knew, his prophecy came true in Jesus Christ. To have hope is not to gloss over problems, pretend everything was fine. Whether life feels like a war zone at the moment or not, we all live between what we hope for and actually of our, life at the present, our lives at the present. As you go through to the day to day, if you feel pain or frustration, bring it to God in prayer and remind yourself to look up and look to the horizon and see the hope there. With just four weeks to Christmas, I don't expect you want to know that. <laughs> with just four weeks to, to, till Christmas, how's your hope on it? Are you hoping that all the, the shopping will be finished, presents all wrapped, family and friends <coughs> in the right place at the right time, <coughs> all ready have to have some fun? Or are you praying that desperation doesn't set in and that you've got a heart? Although you've got 101 million things to do, you'll still be able to do them all. Whatever state of mind you're in, my hope and prayer for you is that you won't forget to have private time celebration come the 25th of December with Jesus our Lord. Sometimes that gets washed away because we're so busy. Paul writes in Colossians 1, 26-27, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. These verses reveal an astonishing truth about Jesus coming into our world. One which we sometimes forget, especially amidst the business of Christmas. Paul says the whole point of God becoming human and walking on earth was that he would one day, by his spirit, make his house in each one of us. The birth in the stable, the 33 years of life, the three remarkable years of, of ministry, and of the obedience all the way to the cross, death, and then the glorious resurrection were all absolutely crucial. But the end game, the point of it all, was that he would take up residence in you and me. Even God, the creator of the universe, never planned to do it all on his own. He fully intended to draw us round about him as his family bearing his name, filled with his hope and transforming this world of ours with his love. Christmas is a time for joining together with others in celebration of his birth. God has called each one of us to be his sons and his daughters. He has won our hearts. So let each of us take the opportunity at this time to share some intimate times with God. After all, we, after all, part of God's genius plan for bringing hope of glory to the world is Christ in you, each one of you and me. Amen. Now I think we're going to sing that hymn that Alan was talking about. And uh, no, it's not. It's, it's the last one. Uh, this, the, this one is going to be is six three one six three one. Tell out my soul. Six three one.
nejčastěji. Když je shrnul far, je approach, je thrown of grace, bringing our concerns, pleas and requests to you. As the season of Advent approaches, we praise and thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, our Saviour, the light of the world. And we pray the light would illumine the hearts and minds of all mankind, so that the darkness of war, injustice, greed, hunger, poverty, and every kind of evil would be overcome. Equip your people the world over not to lose sight of the wonder and message of Advent, so that the world can witness for your kingdom's sake be done. Thank you, Lord, for all people who use their skills and abilities to help make your world a better place. For those who provide medical assistance and for those who tend the sick and the dying. For those who keep us safe. For those who work that others feel that for those who do work that others feel that is beneath them, too menial to do themselves. For those who selflessly volunteer their time to help others. Bless, guard and keep them safe. Thank you also for the provision of people who work in vital services that look after people at Christmas and who often have to miss out on their own family celebrations. Especially at this time of year, we bring before you and remember folks who are in hospital, those who are lonely and isolated, those who are grieving, the loss of a, fr a friend or loved one, those who are homeless, hungry and cold. May the message of love, hope and peace that Jesus brings surround them. Lord, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Last term is 767. I'll let you look it up and then we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. Alice's explanation again. 767. Second, the first two lines there, and then of oh, verse one, and then we go on to verse two, and we sing the first two lines, and then we go back and sing the refrain. And again, first verse three, first two lines, and then verse four, the first two lines, and then go back and sing the refrain again. Okay? It's <laughs> not a mystery after all. <laughs>
I'd like to thank Margaret for her prayers, Alison for her technology, and the skills, and the lady from this. Provide the teas and coffees and treats. Just thank you all for your services today. And online you'll have to go and make your own. So <laughs> now we just say the blessing together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain always.